Another episode of Soul Leveling and yet another bad spot to leave it at. <laughs> I just think the, the creators behind this are just thinking these are some really good cliffhangers and they're not. They just feel like so unsatisfying, but kind of leads me to believe that episode six of Soul Leveling might be a really, really, really good episode. But we'll have to wait for that because, again, stopping point is here. But no, episode five was solid. I, I think overall, looking at the manga, it looks like they cover things pretty well. For some reason, they decided to put Song as the person telling Song about people betraying you in a dungeon. At least based on the manga, or manhwa, it, it's somebody else. Somebody else is telling Song about people essentially killing other people inside of a dungeon or betraying them and leaving them for dead for their own gain. But that's fine. I like Song. <laughs> I, I've, based on the previous moments of Song, I, I do like the guy, so I'll take that. But yeah, let's just jump right into it. Opening up with Song basically becoming very fit and it getting the attention of all the nurses. It had to be that. It had to do the whole thing where the girl's like, can I get your contact info? And he's like, oh, you must want to send me the exam information. <laughs> it's like, really, dude? Really? Even his sister taking note of it, uh, her noticing that he's not only gotten fit and ripped, but also taller. Which that's kind of interesting. Again, it kind of plays into the idea of him leveling up and getting stronger. There was one interesting kind of change they made with the anime in the idea that he does know that, yes, it seems like as my stats are going up, it seems like I'm getting more fit and more muscular. And he's in the anime, it kind of makes it out like, man, maybe I'll get like into becoming a bodybuilder. <laughs> but in the manhwa, he's like literally, no, I don't want to become that. <laughs> like it shows this image of him like all like beefed up and like massive muscles. And he's like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> Maybe that's, it kind of plays into the idea of him going, hmm, I don't really want to max out my strength anymore. Maybe I should stop with the strength part. Uh, but yeah, it's technically getting into the aspect of him wanting to sort of create balance with himself, putting in the idea that it's no point in me being really, really strong and being able to one shot things if I can't hit it. So I do need more agility. It does kind of get a little bit more into the idea of what each one of these stats are kind of doing. He puts a lot of emphasis in the idea that it seems like perception is much more useful than he thought it would be. Again, technically in the previous episode, we've seen that he noticed that, you know, there was this boss over here, so it gave him some sort of input. And there's an indication in this episode with him noticing the insects that, yes, he was able to tell where the enemy was coming from. And, yes, there was a lot of them. So it does seem like perception is really useful for him. But, yes, in the end, he sort of decides on agility being something that can make him faster, able to kind of hit better and all that kind of stuff. Additionally, hitting on intellect as possibly being the one that he doesn't really want the most because he doesn't know that he can use magic or he doesn't think that he can use magic and we have no indication if he could ever learn magic um, or if it could possibly affect something else. I'll be, I'll be curious about that. If intellect could possibly be something more than just magic because that's the assumption coming into this. It's magic. It's mana pull typically with a lot of games. It's the spells that you can use. So we'll see. I, I, I kind of speculated in the previous episode I wonder if it'll be something that he'll learn magic through killing certain certain mobs, or maybe it'll be a reward for one of the, you know, daily quests that he's doing. Something like that. Speaking of daily quests, he, he said that he was going to do his running again later. I'm curious if, because he went off and did this job, if he's going to come out of the job and then go, crap, I forgot, and then get the penalty, and it could be something really crazy that he can maybe this time actually accomplish, whereas before it was just literally survive, run. <laughs> which might, he might actually do a lot better this time around. But no, it was interesting in the, the manhwa, it kind of shows like a diagram of how each one of them sort of play into each other. Like strength and agility kind of accent each other, perception and um, I think strength or something like that. Uh, intellect wasn't connecting to agility, but it was connecting to perception. And again, I can kind of see that with the idea of, again, intellect not just being about casting spells. It could be strictly about, again, more knowledge of the bosses and the mobs themselves and how it all works together would play into perception, the idea of you would know exactly what you're hearing or what you're sensing. Again, they could technically play into each other, which would be interesting. Now, the next part's very interesting because it gets into, obviously, he gets a, this is another funny kind of change. In the in the manhwa, it sort of gives this indication that the person that calls Sung the, <laughs> the landlord is really mad. <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, sorry, I was in the hospital. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> It kind of like made it out like this landlord was mad. But in the anime, it sort of gave the indication that he knows the landlord or maybe the landlord is a part of maybe the guild itself and the hunters association. And maybe they help the hunters out because he has a really nice apartment like that apartment is huge and he's paying for it. Uh, again, it might be something where they maybe they get some help from the hunters guild because I was indicating that with the idea of his mother being uh, hospitalized. 
I was curious if possibly the hospital is helping him more than they would typically help other people because he's a hunter. That would explain why he has a massive apartment just for his self that's barely scraping by. <laughs> because again, the, the, the sister ain't working. Uh, so yeah, it kind of gave this indication that the, the landlord was angry, but he was okay with it. Like he was going to put it off because he was hospitalized. Um, I don't know if that's a Japan thing where if you indicate that you've been in a hospital or something like that, they have to kind of help you out. But yeah, he's like, I'll, I'll help it out. I'll, I'll get you covered. But that gets into Song essentially trying to debate how he's going to handle going forward. And I said something I was really kind of curious about if he would end up going and getting reevaluated to see if he's stronger, higher rank, and thus get higher jobs. Because yes, right now he's kind of limited to where he can go. More so in the idea that people are just people aren't going to hire you. E ranks, there's so many of them. Like he indicates here, there's a lot of them. And more on the Manwa, it kind of indicates more in the idea of there's so many E ranks, there's so many low level adventurers or low rank uh, hunters that getting a job, getting into the guild itself, getting anything is hard because there's so many of them. There's so many weak people that th the, the availability is not there. It was interesting in the in the anime, I was pausing as he was sc scrolling through the jobs. One of them indicated they were looking for somebody that can control demons. That was weird. <laughs> there was like one that was like a, just carry stuff. One that was like, you know, come out and kill with us. Come on, get break some sweats or whatever. But one of them specifically said, we need somebody that can manipulate demons, control them. That's odd. I, I, I'd be curious if maybe there is people out there that are hunters that have the ability to control demons of some sort. And what is a demon compared to a monster in a dungeon? Is it controlling the monsters in the dungeon that are just calling them demons? Or is it like a summoner or something like that? That would be really cool to kind of see what that is about. I, I'm, I'm sure over time we'll get to see different hunters and their different abilities. I mean, we got in the basic ones like tanks, healers, and DPS, but it'd be cool to see, and mages. It'd so be cool to kind of see what other ones they have. It was interesting that when he thinks of the idea of actually going to get reevaluated, he says, no, I shouldn't do that. Which, yes, makes sense. Again, if he does come out there and they find out, oh my gosh, this dude is like this level now, we just evaluated him back here. The word would get out fast. He kind of notes the idea that, yes, people like to gossip. And yes, they kind of show that whole scene with um, with Bake, where he was in the you know interviewing and all that kind of stuff. The, the world itself loves these are these are their heroes basically. So they love talking about the different hunters and what they're able to do. And yes, somebody that is a hunter that is able to get stronger without you know reawakening every time that he gets stronger, that's that's huge. That would be huge news. And so it does kind of he does kind of point out the idea that based on both the anime and the manhwa. That it's twofold. It's one aspect of like, yes, I don't really know if I can take that attention. I need it. And additionally, I need to make sure that this is what it is first. So it's kind of a preparing myself, but at the same time, not just jumping out there and people scrutinizing him and find out that it's not really what he thinks it is and if he can even handle that press. So I kind of see where he's coming from there. Definitely something I would probably do myself. Like, that, that's, can I take that right now? <laughs> Maybe I should make sure that I can actually handle all this stuff before. That attention hits me. But yeah, he gets a job, goes out there, meets Dong Suk Huang, and of course our boy that's been hinted at for a while, the new adventurer, or new hunter, I keep saying adventurer, the new hunter Jin Ho Wu, which <laughs> Jin Ho is like just decked out. <laughs> He's some kid of some rich father and going to my first raid, so dad got me a bunch of equipment. Everybody's looking at him. He's got this nice polished armor and everything like that. It kind of shows that aspect of, uh, yes, Lower rank people can get stronger through good equipment, and it's that cycle of good dungeon crawling, getting better equipment, making yourself stronger through equipment itself. But it kind of shows that little that that jump that you can get if you have the right the right parents. <laughs> um, it kind of indicated in the manhwa this idea of like this corporate kid. This is my hobby, <laughs> adventure hunting is my hobby. <laughs> when they're all rich, sitting on a throne, it was pretty good. But yeah, so far Jin Ho's okay. He's I, he definitely jumped up a lot in my in my rankings as like characters in this show just based off that later part where they i'm really good at legal stuff let me look at your contract yeah you need to split this with him too <laughs> it was good now here's the interesting thing they go into the dungeon and of course at the door they kind of indicate this idea that the way they tell what a dungeon is going to be is based on the the amount of mana that's coming out of the gate and yes this thing's huge and they're kind of leery about it but it's all based on the magic coming out of it and that was kind of interesting, the kind of thing to know, because I always thought it was like they sent scouts in there and they would check the monsters and they would come back out and say, this is what the dungeon. It makes more sense that somebody would just come there, read the the numbers and then go, oh, that's this. 
and yes, it also plays in the idea of missing double dungeons. <laughs> um, it all it all kind of plays together in the idea of how they analyze it. But it was interesting that when they go in the dungeon itself, this is a really curious difference here. When I was watching the anime, I watched the anime first, and then I checked the manhwa. When I was watching the anime, I was getting the sense that Sung the entire time was feeling that something was off. Yes, there was some indication that, yes, these guys are, you know, they're really good at fighting with each other, you know, fighting side by side. They don't have a healer, which seems really odd, but they're they're doing it. Like, they're they're really coordinated. And, yes, you, you have this tank guy that's really skilled. He's got he even has a taunt ability, which is crazy. They're all doing a good job. But there was something that was eating at Sung the entire time. Something's off. Something's going to go bad. Just keep keep your eye out. He was, he was telling Jin Ho, be careful. Something's coming up. Anime was making me believe that he was sensing something elsewhere. Like, we're going to get to a boss. Something is not adding up. They're showing the monster. The monster's all beat up. Something's not right. So I was getting this indication that they're going to run into a really nasty boss. In the manhwa, the entire dungeon route is constantly harping on these guys are bad. <laughs> these other guys that we're party up with are bad. So I thought that was, I actually like the anime more because my attention was to what's in the dungeon. Are they getting too cocky? In the manhwa, there was, there was almost comically too much emphasis put on the party members, constantly showing them with red eyes and they're looking over at, 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 at Song and they're looking over at Yo and they're like, oh yeah, these guys, these are, these are bad guys. And the entire time they're giving that analogy of the lizard and the tail and getting rid of it and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of like how the anime handled it more. I, I know that might be a controversial for some people. I think I like how the anime handled it because I do think that's a bit too cheesy. I hate this idea of making it overly obvious that these dudes are bad dudes. Um, rather than it be a thing of, yes, these guys are going to play on an act that they're, you know, doing good. Yes, that technically goes against Song, who has the ability to, has high, high perception, that he should see that. His perception ability should allow him to see that these guys are not, not good. <laughs> um, but anyways, yes, Song notes the insects coming down, warns everybody, they take it all down. Guy thanks Sung for kind of pointing that out. If it was too late, it would have been bad. All that stuff as they keep traveling into it ends up again giving Yo a little bit of a warning there that, you know, be careful. <laughs> I like how he asks, where'd you get your gear from, my dad? Yeah, be careful. I, I think it might be a thing of trying to get a sense from him, you know, how how did you get the gear, if you're experienced or not. But it was, I mean, the entire thing was Sung kind of bestowing upon him a lot of the knowledge that he has of the dungeon and it's a cool way for us to learn as well he's got a new rookie he's helping out the rookie we get a little more insight into the dungeons and everything like the walls and how they're usually caked with gems which might indicate the idea that all the gems are at the boss room i didn't think about that until now but yes they eventually get to the boss room and there's a ton of gems there and lots of money and that's where we get the the greed creeps in they indicate that uh huang the the leader he possibly had a brother that he seemingly in the shadow of like, he's been doing this whole raiding, and he's been waiting for that moment that he strikes it big, and he could buy a big, you know, raid party or strike party, and then they can he can prove it to his brother that he's got what it has made. So, it seems like he's lived his whole life being under somebody's shadow. That's why he's a jerk, <laughs> seemingly. But yes, that's when Yo, Zhong Ho Yo, he brings up the fact of the contract. Again, thought that was really cool. He's like, he, he obviously knew, you know, he probably signed this contract. They're talking about, you know, splitting it up amongst a certain amount of people. It seemed like the number of people in the party was different than in the, the manhwa, which was a little bit weird. But yeah, he, he points out, yeah, it needs to be to everybody, including Song. So the guy's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> right. Gotcha. Yeah, we're going to split it up. By the way, we forgot our equipment. We'll be right back. And I'm like, gosh, dang, is, is it that obvious? Is it that obvious? I think at that point it was pretty obvious. Like, we're just going to we're going to go get the stuff. <laughs> Like, literally, Sung is walking around with pickaxes sticking out the back of his backpack, and you're, going, you're talking about you need more equipment. Uh, but yeah, it was all ruse to, for some reason, Sung and Yo stay in the room. I don't know why they would, but yeah, they trap him in there, and Fida comes down, and it's time to fight, and Sung, once again, remembers that moment inside that double dungeon, and how that was so much more difficult than this one, so I can obviously take this on. So he steps out there with the with the fang from the, the snake. So that'll be our first seeing on how well that thing works. I, I'm assuming that it, it it's, as, it's a it's a C-rank dungeon, but we don't really have a sense of what the dungeon boss was in the secret dungeon that he did. So it'll be curious to see how, how strong Sung is to... This is going to be basically a test. 
if he can solo a C rank boss, that's a, a massive thing because that makes him even more powerful than C rank. That's going to make him at least a B rank as a hunter because normally you would think you're going to need a, C, a, a a decent group of at least 10 people of C or D rank in order to beat a C rank boss. So again, we'll be really interested to kind of see that. I was kind of hoping that he would kind of go out there having Yol be basically a tank while he fights, but it seems like he just wants to solo it, which makes sense because Yol is going to be completely an unknown. We, he just started. You don't even know if he has the ability to, yes, he has a lot of good gear. Song even pointed out the idea that his gear is making up for his lack of skill. But I mean, if he, he barely took down the, a random <laughs> insect, he's not going to take on a boss. Anyways, that's uh, my thoughts on episode five of Soul Leveling. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below, comment, let me know what's all this episode. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get my content and news reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, tips, link, super thanks, membership button down below. Really appreciate it, but it does, and y'all take care.